From Yahoo Finance, this is Electionomics. I'm Rick Newman. And I'm Alexis Christophorus. Welcome to another edition of Electionomics. Today we are talking about President Trump's chances in the 2020 election and how just might things change for the economy and for investors if former Vice President Joe Biden were to win the White House. Here to chat with us today is Greg Valier. He is Chief right. Policy Strategist at AGF Investments. Greg, always good to see you and thanks for being with us. Likewise, good to see you. I just want to get this out of the way first. There's been some talk out there that, you know what, maybe we won't even have an election on November 3rd, that it might be postponed because of this pandemic. What do you think the chances are of that actually happening? Slim, but not zero. And Joe Biden has talked about it a lot. Uh, he thinks that if, if there's a second wave of the uh, virus and people don't want to stand in line for hours to vote, and if Donald Trump adamantly opposes mail-in ballots, you know, there's a long shot that something could happen, but I wouldn't give it more than 10, 15 percent. So, Greg, I, the latest odds I saw, and I do like how you put, tend to put odds on outcomes, I think you're giving Biden a 55 to 45 percent chance um, of beating Trump. Uh, did I get that right? Well, I'm about 50 50, but I have to say, Rick, that's that's much more optimistic for Biden than the financial markets or Las Vegas or the London bookies. Uh, most people seem to think Trump will win, but I have to look at his numbers over the last two or three weeks. His numbers are terrible for his handling of this, for his job approval rating. Uh, Biden beats uh, Trump in a lot of key uh, swing states, especially in the upper Midwest. So no, I think Biden has a chance and I think Trump is in a real slump. So let me go deeper on that. Um, First of all, presidents in the United States, States generally do not get elected in the aftermath or the midst of a recession, and we're in a terrible recession. This has not happened since uh, almost going back to World War I. And second, if you look at the swing state polls, Biden is ahead by somewhere between, I think it's two or three points in Florida, more in states like Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan. Why are markets and so many other people just dismissing what looks like a pretty solid lead for Biden? Well, a couple of points I'd make, Rick. First of all, Hillary Clinton was leading ab by about the same amount exactly four years ago, and we all know what happened to her. Uh, secondly, if we get to Labor Day and the economy is coming back, which is possible, and we're getting closer to a vaccine, which is possible, Trump still would, would have a chance. Final point I'd make, Trump is brilliant at demonizing opponents makes up sophomoric nicknames. Uh, he goes after, he's going to go after Biden on Biden's ties with China. He's going to go after Biden's energy level. There's been a sexual harassment suit that Biden could be vulnerable on, although Trump has lowered the bar in that regard, in my opinion. <laughs> but, but Biden is not without flaws. And I think Trump will exploit them ruthlessly. All right, and, and, you think and, that, and bring up the what Trump said uh, very recently, putting out the bizarre suggestion that we should somehow ingest disinfectants yeah. and that could help us with the virus. I mean, aren't things like that, aren't these daily or seemingly daily press conferences that he's holding and the, and the bizarre things he's saying? I mean, I'd have to think that Biden and his camp is going to use all of that when they have an opportunity to go up against Trump in this election. Yeah, what's the old saying? If your opponent is self-destructing, don't interrupt him. Right. And I, you know, Biden has stayed in his basement in Wilmington, Delaware. His Trump has had one disastrous press conference after another, and it's not just a disinfectants. It's what Trump has said on a wide range of issues. He's been so dismissive of the virus. And I'd also say, for an awful lot of small business owners, there's tremendous frustration with this loan program that has not worked well. The Small Business Administration has antiquated computers. I think more importantly, a lot of rich firms, firms that have had legal trouble, firms that have uh, campaign contributions have cut in line and a lot of small business owners resent it. So th there are a lot of things that could trip up Trump. Absolutely. So Greg, could we go through uh, two election scenarios, one Trump, one Biden, and just try to address the things that matter to investors and uh, people, you know, you know, focusing on the economy. So if Trump sure. first, if Trump uh, wins re-election. Uh, I mean, we, we, we sort of know what the Trump agenda is, but a lot of that seems to be out the window, given what's going on now. Uh, you know, tough on China on trade, for example. What yep. might a Trump agenda be in this pandemic environment if he wins? 
Well, first and foremost, Rick, I think that money is no object. The sky's the limit for spending, and I think Trump uh, will continue to spend. I think he'll go after an infrastructure plan uh, early next year, maybe even later this year. Uh, and we're at the point now where if the deficit is four trillion or five trillion, I think the markets are pretty much uh, stunned and uh, oblivious to a deficit that high. So Trump will go after that. Trump, we can't forget, has always said, "I'm a tariff guy." So I think he'll go after that as well. Trump may take a look at uh, even more tax cuts. Uh, he likes a payroll tax cut. I wouldn't dismiss something like that. Uh, so I think he, he'll be active. I think if the Senate stays Republican, that's the key for investors. If the Senate stays Republican, that's the firewall to prevent any activist legislation leaving the House, which will stay Democrat. Uh, and I think that's going to be a key factor as well. Is that um, Trump agenda? Is that, I mean, across the board, friendly to investors? Well, it has been, it has been until the uh, virus. I mean, until we got the virus, the S and P was up something like fifty percent since inauguration day. So I think uh, Trump can make a valid claim that the markets uh, like him. I think there are some things though that markets might like with Biden. Okay, let's well, talk about gonna, yeah, that. let's talk about before we do that. Uh, do you think that the President Trump's plunging poll numbers do put? the Senate at risk for Republicans at this point? What do you put the odds at there? Yeah, I took a look at it just the other day and wrote a piece on this. I think that it's the Senate's in play. I don't think the House is in play, but the Senate is in play. The D Democrats would have to come up with basically a net gain of four because they're going to lose their seat in Alabama. But you look at that, there are four, just uh, amazingly, there are four Republican seats, Colorado, Arizona, uh, Maine, and uh, North Carolina, where the Republicans are in some trouble. So the Senate could be in play. Play. If the Senate goes back to the Democrats, that's a real concern for the markets because you will get a much more pressure for Medicare for all, the Green New Deal, big, big new tax increases. They'd have a better chance, obviously, if both houses were controlled by the Democrats. For the, for the Democrats to take the Senate, that presumes that Biden wins, correct? Because that would you'd have yeah. to have that coattail effect, right? Yes, it does. And, and, you know, Biden has to worry about a, a few other issues. I think, though, for the markets, they'd certainly prefer a uh, Biden over uh, Bernie or Elizabeth Warren, I think the markets were pleased to see a relative moderate. I consider Biden sort of a center left Democrat, somewhat like Obama. Uh, but the markets are going to have to worry that Biden will go for a tax hike. There's no question. Once the virus uh, crisis is over, I think he'll go for that. I think he'll be more activist on regulatory policy. Uh, he'll be more activist on health policy. So there are some things the markets have to worry about. What the markets, I think, would like with Biden is that he's a moderate on trade. He's not a tariff guy like Trump, and he's more predictable. I think Biden would be a very predictable president, whereas Trump is maybe the least predictable president I have ever followed in my career. So let's talk about the Senate. Uh, if we do have a Biden uh, presidency with Democrats controlling the Senate, I mean, that would be a wafer thin uh, majority in the Senate under the, under the best circumstances for Democrats, right? Which means... Yep. Um, they would have to get every Democrat to vote for any legislation. And there are a lot of Democrats who don't favor those, um, yep. those big expensive um, overreach programs you just described, Medicare for all, Green New Deal. And are you Rick, thinking- about the odds of, of President Trump winning? Is it, is it contingent really on this virus and our ability to get a vaccine. I mean, if there if there is a vaccine, a workable vaccine that they can bring tomorrow, and this would really be rushing it, but let's say by yeah. September or you know or October, sometime before the November election, we have a vaccine, and and and, a, and the economy starts to open again. And already right. we're seeing the stock market being pretty resilient throughout all of this. You have to assume yeah. it will continue to be so. Does that actually play into Trump's favor? Sure does. And I'd say, Alexis, that these news stories coming out of Oxford University in England are really interesting, that they have uh, apparently found something that, in at least in monkeys, uh, works uh, very well against the, the virus. They're going to start testing it on humans in the next few weeks. They're even saying there could be a vaccine ready, not for the whole world, but maybe ready in England by September. That would be tremendously important. But to go back to your question on Trump and what could get him elected or not, I think it comes down to one issue. 
That's his temperament. Uh, I think he has shown that he does not have the temperament to handle a crisis like this. And I'm not a, a, a Trump basher, but I have to say as a political analyst, his temperament has left a lot of uh, questions. And uh, I think he has to sh convince the public that, that he's not going to be as uh, flamboyant, let us say, on, on some of these issues that he's raised eyebrows with uh, in the last few weeks. Guys, I'm sitting here and my irony alerts are just going off all yep. around me. Trump, the anti-science president, relies on yeah, science right. to come up with a breakthrough that could help him get reelected. I just feel like I need to point that out. How ironic. Oh. <laughs> he, said, he said he's smarter than the scientists. He's smarter than the generals. He's smarter than Jerome Powell. Uh, so yeah, he, he's, that is iron, irony, absolutely. Uh, on this temperament question, Greg, uh, I mean, there's zero chance that Trump is going to change the way he operates, right? Well, he's about to turn 74 in a, in a month and a half. So at that age, no, I, I think it's going to be awfully hard to see him change the, the way he is. I mean, he uh, he has tremendously loyal supporters, as we all know, and that's going to make this a pretty close election. But no, you're not going to change him. What about um, Biden's running mate? I, I sort of feel like we just haven't yeah. heard about any of this, right? He, he dropped that bombshell during that the last debate saying it would be a woman. Oh, he didn't say who. Yeah. Uh, what do you hear? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I and mean, the, the percentage move, the conventional wisdom, which is not always correct, is that it'll be Amy Klobuchar, who would help him in the upper Midwest, would guarantee him Minnesota, would help him in Wisconsin and Iowa, which could be two really pivotal states. And, and I think she's qualified and she ran a pretty good campaign. But there are lots of other names out there. Some people would say Elizabeth Warren could get all of the Bernie Sanders supporters. And the Bernie Sanders supporters were really angry by a decision in New York State not to have the primary. They want primaries because they want delegates and they want to have an inf impact on the Democrats' platform later in the summer. So the Bernie people are still not in love with Joe Biden. So Elizabeth Warren could make sense. I think a woman of color would make sense. Uh, Kamala Harris, they, they wouldn't need her for California. Uh, uh, Biden will win by 70-30 in California. But having a woman of color could help around the country and make the difference perhaps. And there are Hispanic women. There's a, an interesting senator from Illinois, Tammy Duckworth, who lost both of her legs in Afghanistan. She's a pretty uh, good senator. So there's a plethora of uh, candidates. But again, the conventional wisdom is Amy Klobuchar. Let me ask about this idea also circulating that Biden should uh, name the people he would appoint to his cabinet before um, before he actually gets elected. I mean, that does not usually happen. I mean, sometimes you have an idea by the people who are proxies and surrogates for the candidate uh, and the big people helping them out, but it's not uh, ordinary that a president would do that. Would that be a good move for Biden? It could, and then if he has uh, people you know, who are highly regarded like Andrew Cuomo or uh, Gavin Newsom, if he uh, announced they would be in his cabinet or he would try to seek them, I think that would make a difference. And by the way, I, I, I run into so many people who are lukewarm on Biden and say, boy, Cuomo or Newsom would be fabulous. Yeah. And I tell people, well, they're running in 2024. Right. Uh, they're, right. Not run they're not running in 2020, but I think Newsom, Cuomo, and whoever Biden's running mate uh, is will all be running in, in 2024. Well, one of my questions is, I mean, Joe Biden does have an age issue, um, to my mind. I mean, he, uh, you know, he's been a public figure for a long time. And you, you, anybody who's seen him before knows he is slowing down. He actually yeah. looked old, and I'm sure that's with tons of makeup uh, from his, you know, studio in the basement yeah. in Delaware or whatever. Can Biden offset that somewhat if he sort of shows everybody the team that he wants to form? And there are a lot of young faces in that team. Yeah, you make a good point. The, the, the party has a pretty deep bench and he may uh, look at a Stacey Abrams. I mean, there's all sorts of people who could be br Pete brought Buttigieg, in. Edge, you know. Um, yeah. Yep, a absolutely. Who could, who could all be brought into his team. And I think the party would be pleased to to see something like that. I, I'm told that the Trump campaign is going to make their campaign about Biden. They're going to really try to rough him up on China. And Biden does have an, a record of dealing with China, being conciliatory with China. And I got to say, one of the uh, sidebars to this upcoming election will be the deep antipathy that the US and Western Europe now have toward China. And, and I think that could hurt Biden quite a bit.
Hmm. Yeah, and I already saw an ad, pretty scathing ad from the Trump administration lighting into Biden and using his words against him regarding China throughout his political career. I want to get back to the national debt for a moment, uh, because yep. you, you talked about it earlier. It well, seems nobody cares about the national debt. Come on. That's right. Who, well, Mitch McConnell seems to care about the national debt. He's even yep. talking about perhaps we're going to see states or cities file for bankruptcy. I mean, this kind of reminds me of, you know, New York City back in the 1970s. I mean, do you think it's going to get there, Greg? Uh, no, but it will get there in one aspect, and that is I think that McConnell and most Republicans, including the president, will not give money to states that have mismanaged their pension funds. So Illinois, for example, is not going to get a big chunk of money for their pension funds. They may get a big chunk of money for police and firefighters. Uh, so there will be another huge bill. Uh, maybe a trillion dollars, maybe more for state and local governments. Uh, and I think we're at the point now where the entire city of Washington has embraced this modern monetary theory that holds in part the deficits don't matter. It just doesn't matter because there's an insatiable demand for treasuries. To a certain extent, I agree with Trump. If you're going to do something like infrastructure, why not now? Interest rates are at zero. So I, I think that Trump will have a fight with his own party with the fiscal hawks, but I think Trump will prevail because he wants to get reelected. And spending more money, goosing the economy, goosing the markets is something that I think Trump will embrace. So I, I think the deficit this year will probably exceed four trillion. Next year, maybe it'll be three trillion. And it's not just spending, it's a loss of revenues that contributes to the uh, deficit. Uh, so as we get into 2022, we'll be talking about total US debt of $30 trillion going even higher. It, at some point, we're gonna have to worry about this, maybe in the middle of this decade. But for now, I think the mantra is save the patient. This is triage. Once we save the patient, then a year or two down the road, we'll worry about the deficit. Fiscal discipline is just dead as a Republican issue? No, I think there are some Republicans, McConnell is a part of that camp, that do worry about the size of the deficit. But, you know, a lot of these Republicans for a decade or longer said the deficits are going to doom us. We're going to have high inflation. Bond market's going to uh, collapse. No, we haven't had high inflation. The bond market is accommodated deficits of this magnitude. So I, I think it's a tough case to make right now. So I think Trump gets it. I think Trump deep down in is a Keynesian, probably Larry Kudlow deep down in is a Keynesian. I think they're uh, content to spend more money because right now spending more money is good for the economy. You know, in 2025, maybe we'll revisit this, but it, it's not an issue for right now. So you know, Age a minute ago, right? So Biden is 77, I believe. Yep. You said yep. Trump is going to be 74. I mean, there's not a big difference here, Greg. We 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 have yep. two, you know, senior citizens, you know, that we have to choose from for president. So is age really going to be a part of this? Uh, maybe not, but I, I think every time Biden stumbles or Joe Biden catches a cold, <laughs> there's going to be speculation <laughs> about his he mental or physical health. But uh, it, Trump it has amazing stamina. I've got to say, in the last uh, couple of weeks of the 2016 campaign, he outworked Hillary. I mean, he did more events. He had uh, great stamina. And I think that he has to be the favorite based on just age. The, again, though, I, I feel very strongly temperament is important. And I think while Biden is not a, a, a house of fire, I think he exudes some um, competence, some uh, calm. And I think Im importantly, he exudes empathy. And empathy is not one of Donald Trump's strong points. You know, there was a, um, I th it might have been a Joe Biden podcast, and he was just chatting with somebody. And somebody asked, what's your daily routine? And he said, well, I usually get up around 8 a.m. And then I, and, and I thought, I don't, even yeah. if he gets up at 8 a.m., I don't think he should be telling people that. I mean, Trump like, barely sleeps. Yeah, I, I'm having lunch by 8 a.m. I mean, so you're, you're, abso you're absolutely right. So that's that that's something that doesn't inspire people that he's so he's got to get a young, vibrant running mate. And he's got to get a, maybe I, I agree with you, Rick. Maybe he's got to announce I'm going to have Andrew Cuomo head the Treasury Department or whatever. I think he's got to announce that he's got a vibrant new talent poised to enter his administration or vote a judge. That's that's not a bad thought either. Wait, I was asked about the uh, Cuomo would be happy with a cabinet position. I would almost think Cuomo would say, "I'm not doing this unless I get to be president." Uh, 
Yeah, and of course Cuomo already was Secretary of HUD, you know, and I, I, unless it's Treasury or something of that magnitude, I think Cuomo would 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 stay in New York. But you know, the the Cuomo family DNA is indecisive. His father Mario was indecisive, you know, and Cuomo himself was indecisive on shutting down New York. But I do think Cuomo will run. But you know, my sense I may be proved wrong, but my sense that is that the next superstar politician in the Democrats Party is Gavin Newsom. Yeah, I can see that. He's got uh, the looks. He's got the hair. He's very art. He's very articulate. Yeah. Uh, he comes from the right state. I, Newsom, I think, if he runs, is going to be a formidable candidate. He's like a Democrat, Ronald Reagan, to a certain extent, uh, absolutely. And his numbers right now in California are just off the charts. So, real quick, uh, what about the conventions? Um, they, it's, it might be hard to hold these conventions. The way I yeah. kind of think about this is Trump must feel like he has to have a convention because of the stage craft and uh, yep. the way Trump thinks of everything as theater that he can broadcast into people's living rooms. Right. Uh, does Trump have to have a convention? And what if he doesn't? He'd like one. He'd like rallies. But uh, is Yankee Stadium going to sell out anytime soon? No. I, I think that this idea of a huge convention crowd or a huge rally is going to worry people. He, even though he's got his core supporters who were in Madison, Wisconsin and other places rallying, the polls in the last few days have showed overwhelmingly that 75, 80 percent of Americans are leery about getting into a big uh, rally. So Trump may not get one. He may have to do it like we're all doing th things mm. uh, with uh, virtually on Zoom or uh, whatever. So th that that could be a problem for Trump. I think he needs that energy of having a, a rally and he may not be able to have it. Do you think I mean, I think I know the answer to this, but Mike Pence remains his his running mate, correct? Yeah, there was a rumor, Alexis, a few months ago that some people were hoping to replace Pence with, say, Nikki Haley, that a woman on the ticket would, would help the ticket. I, I, it's inconceivable to me that Pence would get booted. He's done a very good job, in my opinion. Um, uh, he, he's been kind of unctuous and you know, he sucks up to Trump, but he, I think he's done a pretty good job. And maybe even more importantly, Pence has tremendous support among evangelical Christians. And I think to dump him is, is highly unlikely. We'll, we'll have some kind of race in 2024 with Pence, Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, Nikki Haley, a lot of people, uh, Ben Sass, a lot of people are going to run in 2024, but I think that uh, Pence stays on the ticket. If we survive until 2024. Oh, we will. Like, we'll survive. We will. We will. We're getting the vaccine, man. We'll have a vaccine by winter. Boy, I mean, that would be rec that'd be the fastest vaccine ever, but I hope we do. So do I. From your uh, our lips to God's ears, right? And through the scientists, of course. Yes, indeed. Yep. What do you think, if, if you had to point to one fatal mistake, we'll call it fatal, that Trump has made throughout this pandemic, what would it be, Greg? His inability to listen to the scientists and take their advice. Uh, Dr. Fauci seems to be maybe they're phasing him out. I don't see him on the press conference quite as much. I, I think that was a big mistake. I mean, yes, Trump tr stopped Chinese flights coming into America in late January, but a lot of people came in after that. But what happened in February? I think when the history is written of this, the, their indecision, their policy paralysis during the month of February will be a key part of that narrative, that he did not move as aggressively as he should have. And there's all sorts of tape, all sorts of sound bites that Biden is going to use where Trump said, I don't take responsibility. Or when he said, we only have 15 cases and it's going down to zero soon. There's so many dismissive things that Trump said during February that are going to be played back over and over and over again during the campaign. I'm surprised it's not lower. And you know, his worst poll is the uh, yes, the poll is is Rasmussen. Yeah. Which is, is Rasmussen's poll has always been criticized for being too pro-Trump. And here's Rasmussen showing ten or eleven point difference in positive negative. He's got Trump with negative at fifty five, positive at fifty uh, forty four or forty five. That's a big big gap. And a lot of his other uh, bad polls, his statewide polls, are from Fox. Yep. There you go. That, that doesn't say at all. Greg Valliere, we're going to leave it there. Thanks for a great conversation.
Chief U.S. Policy Strategist at AGF Investments. And thanks to all of you uh, for joining us week after week. Be sure to rate and review what you just heard and follow me at Alexis TV News. And me at Rick J. Newman. And Greg, you want to toss your Twitter out there? Sure. It, well, just G Valier, I E S B, at yahoo.com. That's where I get everything. Sounds good. It's a, it's a great read, your morning bullet points. And uh, thank, thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you next time.